battle for one. You're pulling ahead. Keep it that way. Two for one. Zone A lost. Zone C captured. You have a Two for one. Three opponents down. Two. You have my respect, Hunter. Double down. Ah! Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka DSI, and in this video, we're going to discuss my top 5 handcans specifically designed for Trials of Osiris. That's right, Dia Slayers, it's coming back. Trials of Osiris, March 13th, get ready for some crazy sweaty mixed sweat sweat matches, as you know things are going to get super intense. And so just that we're all prepared for what's about to happen, I want to make this top 5 list. FYI, I'm looking at all handcans, I repeat. All hand cannons in the entire game, legendary and exotic. And in association with this, I'm then looking at TTK stats, their base stats, perks and how often they proc, the weapon's bloom, its accuracy, consistency, ease of use, as well as factors like shot cadence and how it affects their shot rhythm. Furthermore, I'm even taking into account things that are going to directly associate with trials, such as the likelihood of winning a 1v1, 1v2, or 1v3 last man standing engagement. I'm intrigued to hear your guys' list on what you guys think is going to make the top 5 list and all that kind of jazz down below, so by all means, let me know before you watch the video. And so after you watch the video, then of course, I'm going to want to hear your thoughts. And so the only thing we have to do is just to simply sit back, relax, grab some Skittles, and if it's through the notification button, and let's jump right into the video. Arriving in the number 5 spot is a handkin that many of you have either come to love or hate, and that beauty is called the Not Forgotten. The main reason as to why this is so is because it's so consistent, and that's because this thing has a recoil control that is the exact same thing as what a 180 rate of fire hand cannon is, but rather it has the optimal TTK of a 150. This then means to you that its bloom, accuracy, consistency, and ease of use are all skyrocketing through the roof, but this is all potentially due to one perk and it's called Magnificent Howl. Essentially what that one perk allows you to do is that as soon as you happen to land two critical headshots, your third shot is then going to guarantee a three tap even if it happens to be a body shot or a critical headshot. Following this exact same wavelength, Magnificent Now is then going to allow that third shot to also have increased range, and that's then going to allow the weapon to be used at longer distances, at least for that third shot. But just so that we're all on the same page, I want to put all the stats that I've just said right there on screen. On the left is the weapon's base TTK stats, but on the right is the weapon with Magnificent Hal Prot. And clearly you can then tell that this is why the weapon has such a crazy good ease of use, because all you simply have to do is land two crits in one body to then still get the weapon's optimal TTK at 0 0.8 seconds. However, I will give a word of caution, and that is that if you don't land two crits, thus not proccing Magnificent now, and say you happen to get something like one crit in one body first, then the weapon's optimal time to kill is going to go up to 1.2 seconds for a total of four shots, and if you happen to miss one of those shots, then it's going to go up to 1.6 seconds for a total of five shots. In other words, you better land your shots because if you don't, this thing is going to punish you so much to the point that even Osiris himself is going to say adios bye bye but the good news is that Anubis is going to welcome you with open arms into the underworld. To prevent that scenario that I just described from happening, what you have to understand is the weapon's overall shot rhythm. So just that we're all on the same page, here's all the weapon's base stats right there on screen. Four things are worth noting. The weapon's range at 77, its stability at 61, its aim assistance at 79, its recoil direction maxing out at 100, and its bounce intensity that's not only vertical, but only a 5. Technically, that was 5 things, but nonetheless, the reason why these 5 things are so important is because it's then going to give the weapon a phenomenal overall shot rhythm. Pretty much what I'm getting at is that this thing is going to do phenomenal in 1v1s, but the same thing cannot be said maybe for 1v2s and certainly not for 1v3s. And the reason why this is so is because its consistency is very, very high but doesn't have any kind of damage buffing perks to actually make it more effective in those longer range engagements, and at the same time, it's not going to allow you to do multiple damage outputs for multiple people faster than 0.8 seconds optimal TTK. When you couple everything that I've just said with the fact that it's got Zen moment, it's certainly going to make those 1v1s even better. And so if you're looking for a phenomenal 1v1 engaging weapon, then this is probably going to be your go-to, but might I add that the Luna's Hell is certainly going to be fantastic and make an Emigurian say, what the heck did I just get wrecked by? 
Arriving in the number 4 spot is a hand cannon that you've probably gotten killed with at some point in time in your crucible journey, and it's called the Spare Rations. The reason why you see so many of these things in PvP is because it's phenomenal in the sense that it can roll with such a wide variety of perk pools that can make it so powerful in PvP, and the same thing can also be said for when Trials does arrive. Just to kind of get a sense as to all the perks that I can roll with, I want to show you all the ones that I recommend right there on screen. And in that fourth and final column, you can clearly tell that this thing is just crazy amazing. It's got Kill Clip, Rampage, Multi-Kill Clip, Slide Shot, Range Finder, Moving Target, and Swashbuckler, just to name a few. But in that third column, here we're a little more limited, with something like, say, Rapid Hit, Snapshot, and Subsistence, followed by the second column to be either High Caliber Rounds, Flared Magwell, Ricochet Rounds, or Light Mag. As far as the first column of perks go, well, that is entirely up to you and your personal preference. If you want to have range, you can go for it. If you want to have stability, you can also go for that. But the main things that I want to point out here is that this particular weapon can come with so many roles to the point that it can be a lethal role, a consistency-based role, or maybe something like, say, a range role. When you happen to get something like, say, rapid hit, its stability stats are going to go skyrocketing through the roof, as well as its reload speed, too. If you can get that perk with something like, say, high caliber rounds and pretty much any of the perks in that fourth column there, you're going to be golden, my friends. And so this pool of perks is one of the reasons as to why it's in the number four spot. But I also gotta mention that there is not a single perk here that can actually increase the weapon's TTK that much more frequently unless you happen to have multi-kill clip. Unfortunately, multi-kill clip is the only perk here that can increase the weapon's optimal TTK. But in order for that to happen, you have to down three guardians and in trials, you're never going to do that because there's only three guardians. So most of the time, if you happen to get a damage buffing perk, that's then going to increase the weapon's overall consistency. But even without having multi-kill clip proc at all, the weapon still got a great optimal TTK at 0.8 seconds. Just that we're on the same page, you can see all the weapon's optimal TTKs and body shot TTKs right there on screen. The key takeaways from this is that the weapon's optimal TTK is never ever changing and it's always going to be at 0.8 seconds. But as far as the body shot TTK goes, that's going to somewhat increase if you happen to get 2 kills and then reload and might go up to 1.2 seconds. What this will also do is actually increase the weapon's effective range, because as soon as you happen to get a damage buffing per product of some kind, it will make the weapon much more viable in longer range engagements. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves the question, how much range are we actually talking about? Well, we can see all the weapon's base stats right there on screen. And just like from before, the weapon's base range at 39, its base stability at 50, its base aim assistance at 92, and its base recoil direction at 100, with only a balance intensity that's not only vertical but at zero, is spectacular. All those factors that I just mentioned are then going to give the weapon some very, very good overall consistency factors, as that's then going to make the accuracy much more predictable, but it's also going to make the bullet magnetism decent, not that great, but still pretty darn good, and yet all at the same time, we're going to be able to pick up on the weapon's shot cadence and shot rhythm that much more effectively and win not just 1v1s, but maybe 1v2s and potentially 1v3s. If you were to ask me, I think that this thing is going to do amazing in trials, and that's because it's going to have some fantastic 1v1 gun skills. And not just this, it's also going to do quite well in 1v2s, especially if you happen to have a rapid hit and multi kill clip, or rapid hit and a damage buffing perk like what I happen to have. But as far as 1v3 goes, I don't know about that. If you're the last guard in standing, it may not be so hot. But nonetheless, when it comes to trials, this thing's still going to be radioactive and make so many guardians bathe in a bath of toxic waste. Making itself known in the number 3 spot is a hand cannon that looks so sleek and sexy just like a rose, but don't be fooled, as its beauty can stab you right in the side, and it's called the Thorn. This thing was one of our favorite weapons from way back when in Destiny 1, and right now, that hasn't changed, because this thing can have some very powerful attributes that make it a lethal monster in PvP, and when it comes to trials, it's going to be 10 times more effective. When you can prevent an enemy guardian from regaining their health, that's going to be exceptionally powerful in trials, as that's then going to make them one shot more often, and it's also going to make them retreat much more frequently, allowing you to then gain the map control. That right there could be the most pivotal aspect about any game in trials, and for us, the Thorn can do exactly this, because it happens to have a damage over time effect. To be more specific, it comes from the perk Mark of the Devourer, and every single time that you happen to land one shot, regardless of whether or not it's a critical headshot or a body shot, this thing's then going to do 4 damage ticks of 2 points of damage each for a total of 8 extra damage points on top of the weapon's actual damage output. This then means to you 
This weapon can 3 tap, no problem piece of cake, and get 3 critical headshots and down that guardian in 0.8 seconds. Piece of cake like taking candy from a baby. But when you happen to incorporate the weapon's damage over time effect, it then only requires 2 crits and 1 body and can still get the exact same TTK at 0.8 seconds. Now granted, that won't be instantaneous as you are going to allow that damage to occur over time. And so rather, what this is then going to allow you to do is put in those 3 shots, run away, get behind cover, maybe get into the next engagement, and sure enough, that enemy guardian is still going to die. Now the wonderful thing about the thorn is that as soon as you happen to get that one kill, that enemy guardian is then going to leave a remnant behind. And that remnant is then going to proc Soul Devourer once you happen to pick it up. And what this perk does is it actually increases that DOT effect from 2 points of damage to 7 points of damage. And in reality, this is then going to associate to still 4 more damage ticks times 7 for an additional damage output of 28 on top of the weapon's bullet damage. If a guardian happens to be at 5 resilience or less, you can then 2 tap somebody my friends, and that is just crazy. But the fact still remains that you're still going to have to wait for the damage over time to actually occur. Just so that we're all on the exact same page, you guys can see all those TTK sets that I've just mentioned right there on screen. And so on the left, we had the weapon's base TTK without the damage over time effect being propped. In the center, we happen to have the weapon with its base DOT occurring. And on the right hand side, we happen to have the weapon with Soul Devourer propped, all culminating in making the weapon extremely unique and certainly worthy of its exotic status. While you're looking at those stats, the only downside to this weapon is that if you are relying on the weapon's DOT effect to actually finish them off, they may be able to put down a Warlock Rift, for example, or they might be able to be healed by somebody else, like say the Wormhust Exotic Helmet, for example. Even so, you cannot deny the fact that this is going to be a thorn in the side for many, many Guardians, pun intended, my friends. And so the next thing that I want to talk about is how often that we're actually going to 3-tap, or rather how often that we're going to 2-tap. And the way in which we can determine this is by looking at the weapon's base stats. As you guys can tell from right there, its base range stat is at 56, which is quite great, especially for the weapon's bold magnetism. But the weapon's base stability is also quite high at 60, as well as the weapon's aim assistance at 85, its recoil direction at 100, and its bounce intensity that is not only vertical, but simply zero. This then means to you that you're going to be able to pick up on the weapon's shot rhythm unbelievably fast, and that's going to allow you to get those three taps that much more effectively. But how good is this thing in terms of its 1v1, 1v2, and 1v3 potential? Well, let's put it this way. If you happen to get that first Guardian down and then pick up the Remnant, you're then going to get that crazy good DOT effect at 7 ticks damage times 4 for an additional 28 points of damage. And then you can push that Guardian if they happen to retreat because you know for a fact they're not going to regain their health. Every single time that you pick up that Remnant, you're then going to get 4 additional shots directly back into the magazine. And so potentially, you can still do this exact same process that I just mentioned for a 1v3 engagement, but it all depends upon whether or not you can pick up those remnants. If you can, then this Thorn is going to act like Exodia, obliterating, decimating, and annihilating every single Guardian's path, and that is surely going to eradicate every Blue Eyes White Dragon. Inserting itself in the number 2 spot is a handgun that makes it look as if it was made for the Gladiator fights in the Colosseum, and it's called the Crimson. Just like the Thorn, this thing is an exotic weapon. But unlike the Thorn, it acts uniquely to any other hand cannon in the entire game, and this is all due to two perks called Banned Weapon and Cruel Remedy. The Crimson doesn't just fire one bolt at a time, but rather it fires three and thus makes it a burst weapon, thus why it has the perk Banned Weapon. But the following perk called Cruel Remedy makes it extremely effective in PvP, and that's because it does two very unique and distinctive things. Number one, if you happen to get a critical headshot, it's going to always refill the entire magazine without you actually having to reload, and that within itself is certainly exotic. But its second attribute is that as soon as you happen to get a kill, regardless of whether or not it's a critical headshot or a body shot, it's then going to start health regen instantaneously on every single kill. When it comes to trials, I can't tell you as to how effective that that's then going to be, because if you think about it this way, you can literally go from engagement to engagement to engagement, not only regenerating your health, but also never reloading, and so far out of all the weapons that I've mentioned so far, this thing can certainly win those 1v3 engagements, aka last man standing engagements, all while sipping a cup of tea. Imagine if Deadpool used this as one of his favorite weapons, oh my gosh, he'd be decimating Guardians, all while making a joker at the same time, and using the weapon's bayonet to slice them in the gut, eviscerating them all while healing himself, and that right there would be a marvelous sight to see. But even so, the very next thing that I want to talk about is the weapon's TTK stats. 
And here you're probably quite surprised because even though it's not that great, it's not terrible either as the weapon still has a great odds on TTK at 0.7 seconds. Just that we're all on the same page, you guys can see all the information right there on screen. And the one thing that I want to note here is that the weapon's actual damage output is at 30.5. And the reason why we know this per crit is because a little while ago, Bungie retweaked this weapon and in that Vidoc, or rather in that TWAP, they specifically said it's now getting buffed to 30.5 points of damage and that's why it's then much more viable in the current sandbox and it's definitely going to be coming into play when Trials comes around. And taking one tiny step back, I just want to recall what I said from earlier and that this thing's shot rhythm is going to be phenomenal and marvelous. And the reason why this is so is because it actually has a catalyst that's then going to increase the weapon's range stat by plus 20. But to really see why it's not going to really miss too many of its shots, we got to look at the weapon's base stats and we can see that right there on screen. Oh my goodness gracious, just look at the weapon's range stat and stability stats as those were at 97 and 99 respectively, giving the weapon a crazy good bullet magnetism and a crazy good accuracy factor all at the same time. If that wasn't good enough, its aim assistance is still very, very high at 75, and its recoil direction is mediocre at 55, but even though its balance intensity is vertical, it's still at 45, and so in this respect, it's not that great. Despite the weapon's recoil direction and balance intensity, it is still very, very vertical, and with the weapon's crazy high bullet magnetism and crazy high accuracy via the weapon's ring stat and stability stats, this thing is going to be like a laser beam that's just going to hit shot after shot after shot, almost as if tossing darts at a dartboard and getting bullseyes every single time. When it comes to 1v3 engagements and last man standing engagements, this thing passes with flying colors. And so I'm telling you right now, be sure to masterwork it as it's definitely going to come into play and maybe, just maybe, allow you to get those 7 wins, going flawless, reaching the lighthouse, and attain ultimate victory. At long last, we have finally reached our number one spot and the hand cannon that I personally am going to be using all the time in trials is the one and only Kindled Orchid. Blossoming like the beautiful flower that it is, I got a feeling that you guys are probably scratching your heads and saying, Xander, what the heck are you thinking? The Kindled Orchid? Yeah, sure, it's a nice looking hand cannon, but come on, why is it in the number one spot? Well, Dia Slayers, the first reason is because it can roll with so many different variations of perks that can give it exactly what you're looking for. And so to see what I'm talking about, here's all the perks that I recommend right there on screen. Most notably, it can roll with not just Rampage, but also Kill Clip in two distinct columns, allowing this thing to 2-tap. Yeah, if that's not your flavor, then what you can also have is Rapid Hit and Explosive Payload in that fourth column, followed by Outlaw, Rangefinder, or Quit Draw in the third column, and Acura's Rounds, Flare Magwell, Drop Mag, and Steady Rounds in that second column. Even though the Spare Rations does happen to have Explosive Payload as a Curator perk for its Curator role, this thing can roll with Explosive Payload as a random roll. And then when you combine that with, say, Rangefinder, Acurize Rounds, and a full bore with a Range Masterwork, oh boy, oh, then we got a range roll that's definitely going to come into play, especially when it comes to Trials. On the other hand, this thing also happens to have Rapid Hit and Quit Draw. And so if you want to have that kind of roll, it's not going to be very, very good for just stability, but also going to be fantastic for a cleanup weapon, then once again, this thing's got you covered. But as I said from before, this thing can also two-tap, and it does so via Rampage and Kill Clip. And all you simply have to do is get one kill and then reload and bada bing bada boom, you got that two tapping potential to change this thing's optimal TTK from 0.87 seconds to 0.43 seconds. I'll say it again, 0.43 seconds my friends and that literally cannot be done by any other hand cannon that's made this list. I can sense that a couple of guardians are skeptical and you're probably thinking, how often is that really going to happen? Well, in playing elimination with this for quite some time now, as well as doing competitive, I can definitely say that that's happening on a regular basis. I mean, I'm two tipping people left and right, no problem. But just that we're on the same page, you guys can see all those stats that I just mentioned right there on screen. On the left, we got the weapon's base stats. In the center, we happen to have kill clip and rampage times one. And on the right hand side, we got kill clip and rampage times two. Remember, rampage is stacking continuously as you happen to get more kills. And although you can't actually control when the perk procs, you can control when kill clip procs. And so in reality, all you simply need is one shot with Rampage and kill clip times one at 103 points of damage, and then one shot with kill clip just by itself at 93 points of damage, and this can still two tap guardians, even if they happen to have eight resilience. As far as the weapon's lethality goes, I think it's safe to say that it's stupendous, marvelous, and spectacular in so many ways. 
But what about the weapon's consistency, its bloom factor, its accuracy, all that kind of jazz? Well, to see this, we gotta look at is the weapon's base stats, and we can see all those right there on screen. Keep in mind that what you're seeing right now is the weapon as a curator role, as that's the game footage that you've been seeing thus far. And so with that role, we then get a range stat at 60, a stability stat at 61, a recoil direction at 99, almost 100, a balance intensity that is not only vertical, but pretty much zero at one, and last but not least, the weapon's aim assistance at 76. Yet again, I say to you, this weapon's shot rhythm is going to be glorious, and you're gonna be able to land a ton of critical headshots on a very regular basis. And with that then comes more accuracy and less bloom, even if you happen to compare it to something like, say, the spare rations. Speaking of the spare rations, I actually did a side-by-side -side comparison analysis and claim that this thing is truly the best hand cannon in the entire game in a separate video, and I explain all why within that video. So if you're interested, then by all means, check it out there in the top right corner of your screen. But moving on, what I also want to mention about the kill on the Orchid is that when you happen to have kill clip proc and rampage times one, times two, or times three proc, that's then going to give a major damage buff, and with it, it's then going to increase the weapon's effective range at longer distances. With that in mind, I can also say that this is going to be just like the Crimson, in the sense that it's not just going to win 1v1s, 1v2s, but certainly 1v3 engagements, aka last man standing engagements, and that within itself is going to make it easily worthy for a trials weapon. But when you happen to get those two taps, those shots are certainly going to make enemy guardians a little bit salty. Of course, we can't have a top 5 list without mentioning some very good honorable mentions. And in this case, we got some like say the Service Revolver, the Trust, the Old Fashioned, and even the Ace of Spades. As all those things can certainly become very very viable in Trials, and it's really just going to depend upon your playstyle. But the reason why they didn't quite make this list is that both the Service Revolver and the Trust have an optimal TTK at 1 second, and that might be just a little bit too long for the vast majority of cases. As far as the Old Fashioned goes, Everything that it can do can pretty much be done by something like, say, the Spare Rations or the Kill on the Orchid. And lastly, we happen to have the Ace of Spades. But don't get me wrong, it's a very powerful weapon. Yet it didn't quite make the list because as soon as you happen to get one kill and then reload, you then proc Memento Mori, which is amazing, but once you happen to actually swap weapons, you're then going to lose that damage buff. And that right there was a deal breaker as to why I didn't make this list. When taking into account things like TTK stats, base stats, perks, how often you proc them, the bloom, the accuracy, the consistency, the ease of use, and even as to how often that they're going to be viable in 1v1s, 1v2s, and 1v3 engagements, I think that you guys now clearly understand as to why the weapons that made this list actually made this list. But by all means, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this stuff down in the comment section below, and whether or not you agree, you disagree, you like some of the weapons, you want to add some different weapons, and no matter what you guys say, you always know that I'm going to respect your opinions, and that's something that I can guarantee. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media because you are the greatest. That's much all I've got for you as of right now, DS Slayers. And as always, GG TNT.